Today we're doing the 2022 Morgan Family Lecture Series. We are extremely honored and proud to present Anthony Schmidt, photographer from the Seattle area of Washington State. I've been a big fan of Anthony's for over a year. When I first came to the museum last June, a friend of mine from Louisiana said, you've got to find this young man. He's a phenomenal photographer and you must bring him to your museum. And since July of last year, I've been pestering his mom to try and make it happen, and we've managed to work it out. So actually, we we all worked it out. We all figured it out. And now, actually, July sixteenth, twenty twenty-two, it all finally happened. Yeah. Absolutely. Anthony is a fourteen-year-old Seattle-based photographer who has an obsession with automobiles. He currently has over three thousand highly detailed scale models and two collector cars: a '59 Studebaker Silverhawk and a '57 Ford. Oh, and the '76 GMC. And he just added a '76 GMC RV to his collection. His collection's better than mine. Yeah, well, I'd like to hear your collection. You did. Neatest thing about Anthony is autism has given him the hyper focus needed to design, create, and execute phenomenal photography. He's done thousands of detailed still life photographs built around realistic models that even fool the experts. With recent appearances on NBC News, half a million TikTok subscribers, and fans across the world, Anthony has proven he is a superhero. Join us as we hear from this talented visiting young artist. His incredible images are sure to delight and inspire us all as we hear his story. Well, hello and welcome everyone. Anthony Schmidt here. I'm going to talk about how it all started. Just in case you didn't know who I am, well, here's the Eric's Heroes news story about me. Let's go ahead and give it a watch. Anthony Schmidt is 12 years old. He has been granted the gift of obsession. He is capable of a singular focus. His eye for detail boggles the mind. These gifts have come to him in the form of autism. So what autism does is, you how the, it comes the things, the ma thoughts come into your mind fast. Yeah. And then their brains are all like numbers, and they like numbers, and even things. I think in autism there's a lot of anxiety that people experience. So they use their special interests kind of as a calming mechanism. Anthony has a special interest. It is cars. So today this is my car collection. So I have out here to out here. Oh my goodness. And then we can, and I even have still some in the windows. All kinds of cars. He wraps up his world in cars. They are in his drawers and in his closet. There are pictures of cars on the walls. There are cars on shelves, old cars and new ones, separated by era. Like this is the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, and then the 70s, or over here. His eye for detail is such that he can tell you the model and make of almost every car ever made. You see a car. I can name it. For real. What's that car? It's a Chevrolet Bel Air. What year? 1957. What's that car? The Chevrolet Nomad, which has the same 1957, and this is the same front end. Downstairs, there's a collection of posters that he loves. 1941 Plymouth pickup. You have a, the 1886 Carl Benz. And he likes seeing old cars in natural settings, like this 32 Ford Coupe. Only, it's not a natural setting, is it? It's all an illusion created from this amazing boy's mind. Those pictures on the wall in his bedroom, the pictures downstairs, Anthony took those pictures. None of them are real cars. They are from his collection of models. <laughs> it happens like this. Anthony has a little workshop. He goes over the models, makes them look rusty sometimes, paints on patina. On this day, Anthony shows up at a park with a box. His mom and assistant, Ramona, follows with a toy barn. He finds a spot. Okay, here we go. He proceeds to create a scene, 
a barn in a field surrounded by forgotten classic automobiles. Ford Fairlane, a Porsche 356B, a Mercury Turnpike, Chevrolet Impala. He looks mm. and thinks. Mm. When the perspective is perfect, the scale spot on, he takes his pictures and the little world he's created comes roaring to life. It's truly because of the autism. It's not despite the autism, it's because of it. Ramona started sharing his pictures some time back. The reaction was overwhelming. She started a Facebook page and the followers came in droves. There's like 142,000 of them. Wow. With the help of a Kickstarter campaign, they made a book. It's beautiful and has sold a thousand copies. Look at the art that exists because of one boy's gift of obsession. Look at what Anthony has been able to create. Okay. Not long ago, a police department in New York sent Anthony this picture. It was from a crime scene. They couldn't identify the make and model of the car. I can just tell by the, by the wheels and the, the wheel style and the rear windshield, the windows on the back always has that scoop. And I said it's a 2007 Mercury Montego. The crime was solved. An arrest was made. Oh wait, and this is Nardo Land? Yeah. There was a place in Maltby called Nardoland. Ron Nardoni, the man who owns it, loves the 1950s, and he has created a life-sized illusion in much the same way that Anthony has created miniature ones. How long have you liked cars? All your life? Yes. Cool. We arranged for the two of them to meet. The results were magical. This is a 38 Chev. Old pickup right there. A 67. I have more vehicles than you can imagine. Oh, yeah. See, look at them all. Oh, we have an old Buick Roadmaster. Yeah. About how many would you say you have? Oh, I don't know. I'd never count them, buddy. But one question in here. Which, yeah. Which one's your favorite in oh, here? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> That'd be hard to pick, I guess. Same deal with me. I can't choose favorites. You're a good guy, buddy. I'm sure glad you came to see me. You have amazed people with your art and your knowledge. That's good. And you've shown people that a guy with autism can kick butt, right? Yeah, he can do, yes, and then you can set your mind to whatever you want. Things are not always what they seem, like a car on a gravel road, like a kid with a disability. If Anthony teaches us anything, it's that we must look closer, try to understand more, that we should pay attention to nuance, and that the rough patches, the irregularities, even perceived flaws, are what make old cars, and sometimes young, obsessed, creative boys, flawless. So, this is my first words for all car names. Back at age three, I can name off any car I can see. So let's go ahead and give this video a watch. Okay, Anthony, what car is this? What's this one? Audi. Let me see if you're right. Cheshire. Tesla. Volvo. This is, that was me at age three. Next slide. So, one of my first photos at age six at Kirkland Waterfront. One of my first photos was a. I was amazed at how life size I could make this wooden car look. So that's how it all started. At first, I thought, oh, uh, at first, I thought no one would care about my pictures, but then I thought I might as well post it on Instagram. Then it blew up, and people were saying, why don't you make a calendar? So that's when it started, making those images. The cover of my first calendar, my mother, and also posted the images to the Seattle Photography Club. Facebook group, which got the attention of Michael Driver, my first TV interview. The picture of it, not really anything to play here, just a screenshot, but let's just check out the next. Uh, that's the behind the scenes of it. I'm just showing off what he's going to be doing. 
about how much literally I, w literally I was back then. But this is me and my family create platforms together. We use wood planks, sometimes styrofoam, and the hardware store and other items like for grass, cement, water, come from hobby stores, and I decide where I want to shoot the picture, set up the scene. Usually it takes a couple damn hours for the whole photo shoot. Yeah, the I download the images from my phone to my computer. I print them onto canvas, which is slapped onto a frame. Got social media is responsible for my fame. I run the accounts myself. You can find me Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, Patreon. These are my numbers today. Oh, wait. Now, the next thing is the big one. When I was 12 years old, Greg Wilkinson saw my photos online. He was moved to give me a classic car when people asked him, why did he, why did he, why did he do it? He said, I don't know. I just, he just felt like I should have it. You see, Greg has autism too, and I reminded him of himself when he was my age. The Woodenville Car Club, when I was age 12, they took it to get it detailed, and they gave it a ceramic coating. Then we had a big car show at the Leota Middle School next to my house to present it to me, a big parade, bring it home. You can see there's a big bow on the hood. So that was my very first car ever, and I still have it today. Check out my next car. My 1959 Studebaker Silverhawk. So Greg's gift inspired me to buy my second car this past February. Uh, 1959 Studebaker Silver Hawk I paid for from my calendar sales. So last year I paid for it myself. I had help picking because otherwise I would have taken them all at the dealership because <laughs> see I have trouble with choosing. <laughs> yeah. So it was the only one all original vehicle with all original parts there and in great shape. It ran great and it was just the one that fit me the best. It was in my price range as well, so let's do my next shot. <coughs> uh, last summer, I decided to do a series of photo shoots at a school parking lot through my decades. I matched the era of cars to the era of the schools that were built. This is one of my 1960s photo shoots with a 1964 school, but the photo shoot is set in 1969 get a good look at it, me doing it, the vehicles, the result, the photo. Okay, next slide. I bought this very detailed Studebaker and wagon, station model, station wagon model, and I took it out front at the Snoqualmie, Washington train station, built in 1929. That's how I do it, and then that's the photo. It's another historical photo shoot, Heritage Park, Linwood, Washington. It has a 1913 Ford panel van in front of it. With a next slide is going to be Nardo Land, Maltby, Washington. The real car is in the background, and then the miniature is in the front. There's the result versus me hovering over it. Big giants coming for it. <laughs> Then the next slide, the Cottage Lake Park, a 1948 Ford Country Squire wagon at the beach with a surfboard. So, you see this is another cool one too. So this was another day I had the, the guy from Wheel Hub Magazine f filming me. So this got in Wheel Hub Magazine and the same day I had my real vehicle out for a photo shoot. So next slide is the so this is the Burgermaster. S this photo shoot is set in 1961, but the building was built in 1952 and it would have only been nine years old. So I took all my vintage car this day. I packed up late at night. I took over 50 vehicles and to the shoot, and I started at 9 a.m. to 11:57 a.m. Get a good look at it before I switch slides. Okay. Burgermaster. This is a 
These are both 57 Ford Fairlanes and Corvettes and stuff. Let me give you, just give you a good look at this one for about five seconds. Next slide. This is my fire station, number six, Seattle, Washington. Shoot. So I took these old 1940s and 50s fire trucks out, this 1940s fire station. The empty boots and empty hat are to present the, the great firefighters that passed away that day. Next one. A triple X root beer, Washington in Seattle, Washington. No, it's the Quad Washington. But a uh, 56 Buick, a uh, 58 Impala. We have a uh, 57 Cadillac Eldorado. Let's check it next. Let's give you a good look. Okay, cut shop, Woodville, Washington. This is a 1976 building, and it, these are all 70s vehicles in front of it. We have 70s Chevrolet Step Van G20, a uh, 71 Buick Riviera, 76 Ford F100, and a 1969 Buick Electra 225. Okay, next slide. Another one of my photo shoots, the River Road of a 1930 Ford Model A. Okay, we got. Okay, next slide. This is a 1930s scene at a church meadow. I did on Easter this shot. There's me taking the photo. There's all the the church was made for me and the the roast to pick up Steve. We had a church built for me. I did the photo shoot in Woodenville that is owned by North Shore School District Park itself. Okay, next. I shot this around August 2021 at the BMW dealership in Valley, Washington. This photo is still going around the internet, so it's millions of views. There are so many people who refuse to believe this isn't a real car. Yeah, they like to argue about that a lot, but most of them say, I hope you guys do realize, you guys realize this is fake, do you? But there, there's proof right there that I'm the one who's doing it, and there's the result. <laughs> This is, a, this is a picture of my car collection of three rooms. Many of them were donated to me by fans, but others I paid for. Like I'm sure that probably, I don't know, about 500 of them I paid for, but the other 2,500 were probably donated to me because these car collectors were passing away, and then their fathers were saying that there's no one we'd rather give it to than the Anthony Schmidt guy. So they were dropping them off on our front doorstep one by one. <laughs> well. So those people, I hope they do know that they've gone to a safe home. Next slide. My workshop where I customize and build the model vehicles, or sometimes. All right, now I'm working on a chassis of a 1998 Cadillac Seville, doing some spinners and some red interior and a chromed out engine and nitrous. I have 59 Cadillac under there too, which is pretty cool. Okay, I think that's it for it. So now next slide. The, uh, this is a, some of the oldest photos I've done. Henry Ford was the first driver who was dyslexic just like me. Bertha, no, Bertha Benz is the first driver, but Henry Ford is just dyslexic just like me. We, might, we not, may not have any cars if it would not have been for a woman to give up who refused to give up. Check out that next. The first driver.
stay with your brother. <laughs> <laughs> Pharmacist in here? <coughs> I'm looking for 10 liters of Lee groin. You won't get those stains out of that dress. Better buy a new one. It's not for my dress, it's for my carriage. Are you trying to poison your horses? Do you have 10 liters or not? slide about all the famous people I've met. I'm at Temple Grandin, Sir Mix-a-Lot, and Tim Cook tweeted about me. So Temple Grandin encouraged me to make my pictures more successful. And Sir Mix-a-Lot had the same name as me. He goes to my car club, and Tim Cook tweeted about me because I use an iPhone. So that's it. Any questions? Any questions? Oh, what's your question? Do you enjoy working with like die cast models better or the little plastic put together models? Uh, both. If whenever, whenever someone drops off a vehicle that's in bad shape, I can probably restore it. But no matter what, even if it's just a shell of a car, I can make it look like new again with parts. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, him in the back. <laughs> What's your favorite car? No favorites. I like them all the same. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Oh, you right here? You started this when you were three? Yeah. And what are your plans for the future? Uh, I have plans to, so I own two, three one-to-one -one scale cars. I plan to get a garage like this someday is my future plans. <laughs> yeah, any other questions? Uh, any raised hands? Do you do all of photography with a cell phone? Yeah. That's amazing. Huh? Yeah, I plan to start working with a real camera one day. <laughs> 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 but I use it, mostly I use a cell phone because it has so many different good options on there with the camera. Okay, I see any other questions? Questions, questions. I don't see anyone here. Oh, we have one little girl right here. Question. Okay, question. Do you have do you do all the do you make all the car like do you make all the car designs yourself? Uh, no, I just 
Why? No, they. I got. I got the car designs. Either I pay for them and buy them, or I just, or they give them to me and then I restore them. But I did get. But Tesla did contact me to ask about the Cybertruck they're making. They asked me what. What do you want us to change on it? I'm thinking about having them add mirrors and maybe a roof rack option. And yeah. Oh, you. Yes. Do you have a favorite scale to work in? Uh, well, not really. But probably anything past 124. I like 126, 124. I like 1 to 1. I like 116, 115. One. Like anything that's anything bigger than 124. But in one to one scale, like I like, I don't do the Hot Wheels size because it just doesn't turn out that great in photos. <laughs> I don't do the 140. It's like the larger scale vehicles usually turn out better because of the more higher detail. Yeah, it's the same shirt as me too. Like I have, <laughs> I have that shirt at home too. Yeah, my you? Got it for me. <laughs> you? Do you when you're taking your pictures, do you measure from the building, or are you just all... It's uh, 124 scale needs to be 24 feet away. 118 needs to be 18 feet away. Okay, so you do do measurements. You just don't do it by your eye. Yeah. Any questions? That guy looks like he has a question. Oh, he's just... Oh. Uh, no questions? Oh, you? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you? Have you ever tried working with race cars in their settings? Like NASCAR or something? Yeah, I've done lots of those. Have you? I uh, have one question over here. <laughs> is your mother here with you? What? Is your mother here with you? Uh, yeah, she's right back there. She's the person who's doing all the, she does the changing the slides. Uh, thank you. Questions, questions, questions. Any more? Oh, look, oh this guy in the back. Now, your, your personal car collection is mostly older cars. Is there a new car that's out nowadays that spikes your interest? I like all the newer cars. Anything that's, that can go into a show, but not like the average daily drivers. But I do have a few daily drivers, like minivans and SUVs in my collection, and some exotics and trucks. What car do you drive? I drive an F-150 Ford pickup. Year? 16, 2016. Fairly new then. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah. You? Oh. You? Yeah. Uh, when you were working on rebuilding the one car, you seemed to not have any reference materials. Do you remember all the details of all the cars? Yeah, I know. I put aftermarket rims with spinners. I put a spoiler, underbody lights, and some uh, some. A tribal decal, car and hood, spoiler, interior, custom chrome interior. So you kind of build them to their original? I, I build them to look like they've been customized into street rods. Okay. I do some original build. Like on the newer car, I think they should all be customized because just to make them look less boring. But the older yeah. car should always stay, stay proud and high as they sit. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, we got lights out. <laughs> A little bit of power outage. Anyone else? <laughs> Any el anyone else questions here? Ooh. Um, do you think that when you when it's time to go to college or something, will you just will you study automotive engineering? Or? Yeah, so I have plans to do automotive engineering, photography, and art. Okay, so you want to build cars? Yeah. And or yeah, do them. yeah, build cars and. Would you do much drawing if possible? I do a lot. Like drawing. Uh, let's see here. Anyone else? We have lots of hands. Okay, your question. So I know a lot of your pictures kind of take people back in time. Um, is there any time period specifically you would like to go back to? Uh, no. No. Fifty-six <laughs> to sixty-one, maybe. Fifty-six to sixty-one. Mm -hmm. Good year for cars. Yeah. You. What? Just waving. Mm -hmm. Oh, you. <laughs> you? Any other questions? Uh, looking here. Oh, this guy in the background here. 
Anthony, have you had a chance to look through the car collection here? Oh, yeah. And do you have a favorite? No, I like them all. <laughs> all the old ones. All the old ones. All the old ones. I don't like the... I like the, the 2017 Ford GT, but I like the Pontiac, the Hudson, the... I like them all except... I like every old car except for the... I think the Tesla out there is okay, but it's still, it's still kind of a daily driver because it's more of a... It should be. It's good. It should be on the road, not in a museum. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they had a they had a Corvette out there, like a modern one that should just be more. That's more of a grocery getter car. <laughs> uh, oh, this oh, that little girl in the background again. <laughs> okay, Hugh. You ever tried to make cars look like they're moving? What? You ever tried to make cars look like they're moving? Yeah, I do motion blurs on the tires a lot. I put people in them. I have this one photo of a 1986 Audi Quattro in the rally. It's doing drifting. And it has, I put motion blurs on the tires to make it look like it was moving. I put a guy in it. It's going to be in your new calendar, too, the 2023 calendar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, see me. Raised hands. Looking here. No. Ooh, this cameraman. Oh, he's pointing at someone who has a question. You? Did I hear someone who has a question? Is that Corvette out there 2022? What? That orange Corvette out there. Yeah, that's a 2018, I think. It's the ZR1. It's got a very good price tag to it. <laughs> What engine does your uh, Studebaker have? It's the best engine you could get, the 289 V8. Back in 1959, it was one of the highest engines you could get, but in 1959, it has the radio option, AC, heat, power steering, has every option you could get. Yeah, so it's complete, considered fully loaded. You got a question right now? Uh, this, uh, What's the most difficult photo shoot you've worked on? Most difficult? That would be a pretty hard one. Well, probably the one I'm currently working on right now when I get home is I have like 90 different cars to shoot, and I'm, just, I'm have to go to all these different locations. And one day I completed it before I came on this trip, but I'm still going to have to finish up, so probably that one's the hardest. What? You? Did, did you make a 2022 calendar? Uh, 2022 calendar? Did you make one? Yes. Oh, yeah, I did. I'm coming out with my 2023 calendar soon. Where can we buy a 2022? Uh, Anthony Schmidt, RyanSchmidt.com, I think. The yeah. 2023 calendar is going on pre sale right now it's as it's his brand new second book. Yes, all in. So I have a book for sale too, you guys can go get. Right now. We have a few copies of his first book and some of his pictures and things in our gift shop, but you can also order directly through them as well. So, you know, it's it's good to support young artists, especially one this talented. Yeah. We also have the we have little flyers up at the front desk that will have that yep. website on it. So you can pick up one of those too. Questions. Any other questions? Let's hear it for Anthony again, please.